TEDx event was being organized by high school students, I was begging to be allowed, allowed to be here. So I'm really excited. When I was 13 years old, I was told uh, by my coach that I should no longer play baseball. And he waited until everyone else was out of the dugout, and it was just me and him. And you know what? He, grown men are kind of intimidating when you're just a 13-year-old girl. And I remember him kind of looking down on me and saying, I don't want you on my team. You're only here because they made me take you. So I decided, you know, I love baseball, and we'll see where we end up at the end of the story. But I remember that day, because when I was 12, I had the time of my life. I had the greatest coach you can imagine. And I was playing shortstop, and I was pitching, and I just loved playing. And so I was really surprised when I was 13, and all of a sudden, I wasn't supposed to be there anymore. I'm the girl without the hat. <laughs> this seems very indicative of my personality today. So I'm not surprised that I don't have a hat. But this is me playing t-ball, and it's very much like many t-ball pictures. You see three girls, and the rest are boys. And uh, I just remember thinking that girl on the end was the most amazing person in the world, because as you can see, she's about as tall as a coach. And I just remember hitting home runs all the time. I thought maybe one day I could grow up and be her. Uh, but instead, I was playing right field, probably looking for my hat. <laughs> Approximately 100,000 girls played Little League Baseball. And this is a uh, conservative number because Little League Baseball is only one national youth baseball organization, but there's actually eight more. So you could probably guess there's 150,000 girls playing baseball, just like in those t-ball leagues. Um, but we're going to stick with the number 100,000 because uh, littleleague.org is a good source, and we're going to stick with that one number. But women make up half of Major League Baseball's fans. Just, just under, about 46%, 48%. So you have this great thing where you have 100,000 girls playing youth baseball. You've got half the fans at Major League Baseball games, whether you're a Dodgers fan or an Angels fan, are women. They're girls. That's really exciting. But the next slide shows that there's only 1,000 girls playing high school baseball. So here's my question. What happened to the other 99,000 girls? It's a bit of an epidemic. 99,000 girls are no longer playing a sport that they started with t-ball. And it doesn't seem that anyone's asking the question, where did they go? This is Chelsea Baker. Here she is, 12 years old. She might even be 11. And I'm going to show a small video, a little bit about her story, and I think that you're going to find this story is a very common story among girls who play baseball. Hi, my name is Rod Mason from Plant City, Florida. My daughter Chelsea plays baseball. As an 11-year-old, she had to enter the draft at our Little League Park. She is one of the top players in the league. On draft day, she was bypassed 23 times. The consensus of seven of the eight coaches was, the boys will pass her by, or she can't keep playing at this high level, or you have to have her for two years and eventually she'll go play softball. Why waste your pick? She proved them all wrong. She led all the 11 year olds in home runs. She was the top 11 year old pitcher in the league and she threw a perfect game in the district championship. Bottom line is, all she's ever asked for is a fair shake and a chance to play the game she loves. All I wanna do is play baseball. So here's the, the video talks about how Chelsea is 11 years old and she wants to play baseball and what many people don't know is that literally they draft their teams so coaches get to decide okay i want this one you know and then it's the next coach's turn and nobody was going to draft her and the reasons were was because she was a girl they thought she would just quit they thought that the boys would outpace her you know they just thought it was a wasted draft pick can you imagine a draft pick you're 11 years old but, you know, we have adults running youth sports, so this is what we get, drafts. And so she was not going to get the opportunity until finally a, he, there was a, a neighbor who was always going to draft her, but he was waiting to see how long it would be. So he drafts her, and she ends up throwing a perfect game in the 11-year-old championship. Here's where the story continues to get even more exciting. They're still not that interested in her. She just drew a perfect game. So now she's 12. 
And guess what? She throws another perfect game. Guess where her jersey is? The National Baseball Hall of Fame. This is all from a girl who wasn't supposed to keep playing baseball. This particular picture is because ESPN did a, an E60 report on her. She's playing high school baseball. She is competing at a very high level. She's doing wonderful. And her high school didn't want her to play. So she ended up having to lose a year of eligibility and transfer to another school. Can you imagine that? A 14-year-old who has previously shown that she could compete at an amazing level and still having trouble finding a team to play on. She's an amazing girl. She's wonderful. She's as humble as can be. And here's the thing, that Chelsea's story is so similar to so many other girls. I know that that 99,000 number are many of these girls who want to play baseball but are being told they shouldn't be there. I believe that if you tell a girl she can't play baseball, what else will she believe she can't do? Seems like it's just baseball, it's just a game. But when you say you can't play because you're a girl, what is that really saying to her? And I know that in history, we say, oh, girls can't do science. That's not their area. Or a woman couldn't handle being an ER doctor. That's not what women can do. They get classes, right? Women used to not run marathons. Women were told that they shouldn't ride a bike because it might affect their menstruation period, which would affect their pregnancy. So, as it is, there is a theme that girls are told they shouldn't play baseball. And I think it's really important that we tell them that they can do whatever they want. That they take that power and they take that dream, which is a real focus of today's talks, that dream, and be able to go whichever path they want to go. So why not girls baseball? A little history. I could stay here for hours. This is obviously a passionate topic, and I could just talk on and on about girls baseball and women's baseball and its history. But I'll give you three moments in time that will help you. There was a time when girls were legally, they were banned from Little League. They, they were banned. So um, if a girl came on the team, then the league would threaten to take their charter away and not allow the other boys to play. That's what happened. There were three banned mothers, three mothers of three banned girls who started their own girls' baseball program in, in a small town in New York, and they had 45 girls show up. 45 girls came out to come play baseball. In 1972, Title IX passed. One of the most amazing things for women and girls, and, and really for everyone, that ever happened in, in our history. 1973, Little League is sued for the right for girls to play baseball. That they need to allow girls to play baseball based on the 1972 ruling. Little League is now forced to allow girls to play. 50 girls show up in Hob Hoboken, New Jersey. 50 girls show up to play baseball. Instead, here's what they have on their website. This is on littleleague.org. And I'm not trying to bash Little League, I'm just giving you the history. I can tell you wonderful things that happened in Little League. Instead of resisting further, which is the lawsuit I just referred to, Little League decided to not only admit girls worldwide, but to create a softball program for girls only. At face value, this seems like a really fine statement. But let's think about it in context to those 50 girls who had just showed up from that town looking to play baseball, or those 45 girls, and I'm sure that you would find other examples of girls who wanted to play. So they decided to admit girls, but they didn't really have a choice. But then instead of creating a baseball program for girls, they created softball. And there's nothing wrong with softball, but it's not baseball. And if it was the same sport, then why don't the boys play softball? Here was a decision by people in charge to not allow girls to play baseball. Our national pastime, apple pie baseball, right? This is what you did with your dad. You went to a game. But there was a decision made, and this is where at a great point in history, we're kind of divided. <laughs> if you tell a boy that girls can't play baseball, what else? Well, they believe girls can't do. This is not just a female issue. This is about our society and about what we believe we can 
do together. And if you tell a boy, you know, most men here who played Little League will tell you that they all know of a 12-year-old girl who used to play in their league. And they played shortstop. And she was good. And then in the one year she disappeared. That's what they'll say. They disappeared, but was it their choice? Was it society's choice for them? Or was it someone in a draft room saying we don't want them? I believe that boys, they grow up to be husbands, fathers. We need them to know and understand how amazing girls and women are. Because that's what creates those healthy relationships, and that's what creates healthy children in a healthy society. You know, I joke that every time a girl strikes out a boy, he makes him a better father. <laughs> but there's some truth to that, knowing that you can be beat by a girl. And knowing that we have female soldiers in combat lines in danger all the time. Women are strong and they're capable. And when boys know this, they can grow up in a whole different environment where it's no longer all about machoism, but about what people can do. And that's what excites me. So what can you do to help? You know, there's not one answer. But as adults, you can help create leagues where girls are welcome, where teams are welcome, where no 13-year-old is told that she is not supposed to be on that team. And sometimes, Sometimes we can do something even more amazing and we can create a whole girls league. You know, it's like endless possibilities. If you don't think about what can be done, we can think about what can be done. And sometimes we can even break the mold. In Toronto, in Canada, for example, they actually have an older girls team playing in the younger boys division because there's a feeling at 17 or 18, a woman would be more at a 15, 16 year old level. At a team level, that was the decision in the league. That's thinking outside of the box. That's saying this is a safe decision that these girls and boys could come and play baseball. Chelsea Baker, 12 years old, she may have been too good to play with those boys. You know, I know girls, I have 12 girls who play who throw 70 miles an hour. And sometimes I think, is it safe for them to be playing with those boys? So I think as long as we remember that youth sports is for youth and not for the adults on the sidelines. Not for the parents to play out their fantasies through their children. Then we can really create something amazing. Because it is very, very rare to hear a kid say, I don't want her on my team. I hear, can she play? And when that's the question, then we're making the right decision. This is me. Again, I have a hat. <laughs> Probably the beginning of the season. I didn't quit baseball. But I will tell you that I didn't have a lot of fun after I was 13. Because more than not, I had coaches tell me I couldn't be there, I shouldn't be there, and I sat the bench a lot. The more I was told I was going, I shouldn't be there, the more I was going to be there. You know, I really loved baseball. I love baseball. I think it's the greatest game on earth, and I'm a pitcher, so I throw a curveball off your finger, and just knowing it's going gonna, it's gonna to break perfectly as it comes off your hand, it's just an amazing feeling. And that's something that, that I really cherished, and I wanted to keep playing. And if I had quit, I would have never became the first female to coach men's professional baseball. And I would have never became the first woman to throw batting practice to a major league baseball team. My dreams wouldn't have been possible. Just like Chelsea, who's inspired millions with her story of throwing two perfect games, our dreams would have been shut down at the age of 12. And I believe that if we shut down those dreams, whether they're male or female, boys or girls, even adults, we should all have that right to dream. We should all have the opportunity to pursue that passion. And when we do, well, now we're living in a society worth living in. Now we're all about potential and possibility and not limits. And I know baseball is just a game. But if you tell a girl that she can play, what else will she believe she can do? So thank you very much. <laughs>